everyone, it's Danny. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're just going to be going over the basics of medication. So this video is not covering any specific drugs. That will be in the next video. This is just some overview that you should know before watching that one. But if you want to watch that one first and come here, whatever works for you is fine. Okay, so some things to keep in mind are the medication rights and the medication roots. There's really a lot that goes into pharmacology, but these are the two um, concepts that are important to know when giving medications as an EMT. So that's what will be covered in this video. So for the medication rights, you wanna make sure that you have the right drug, patient, reason, dose, route, time and amount, documentation, history, education, right to refuse, and the right response. So we're gonna go through what all that means. So the right drug, you wanna make sure that when you pull the drug out of wherever your agency keeps them, that it's the drug that you need to give. I know it sounds really simple, but it could be easy in the midst of all the action to take the wrong thing. So you wanna make sure if, for example, you wanna give aspirin, make sure that you took the aspirin and you didn't take maybe the oral glucose by accident. The right patient, so in um, for EMTs, usually you just have one patient. Sometimes you might have more unseen. So it's kind of easy to know that you have the right patient, but again, there could be room for error. Maybe if there's a lot of family on scene and you're not sure which one is the patient. So before you give it, you want to make sure you're giving it to the right person. And with that comes the right reason. You want to make sure that they're getting the medication for whatever their problem is. So if let's say that they are having signs and symptoms of a heart attack, they're having chest pain, you wanna make sure that you're not giving them, um, what's a good example? You're not giving them like Narcan because Narcan is indicated for an opioid overdose. That wouldn't be helpful in, for this situation. And then the right dose, that you wanna to refer to your state protocols. Every state is a little different with the amount that you could give. So you wanna make sure that you're not giving too much or too little, because if you give too much, then that can cause an overdose or adverse reactions that could be fatal. And then you won't wanna to give too little because then they wouldn't be getting the response in the medication. So it wouldn't be effective giving it. The right route, we will be going over that more in the next section because we're gonna talk about medication routes. But just as a little preview, that's going over the different ways that you could give medication because I know most of us take oral medications, but there's many different forms and routes of medications. Okay, the right time and amount. So there are certain medications that you could give multiple doses, but you have to allow time in between. So you would want to find out if you're giving aspirin, for example, when they took it last, if they took it at all because you want to make sure enough time passed before you give the next dose. Okay, um, right documentation. So when you give a medication, you want to make sure that you document everything. You want to note the time that you gave it at, how much you gave, the response to it. Um, yeah, so right when you give a medication, even if you, at that moment you can't document it, make sure you note down the time and all that somewhere. So then afterward, you can go back to your patient care report and enter that all in. The right history. So this comes with multiple parts. You want to note if they have any allergies because you wouldn't want to give a medication that could cause an allergic reaction and then you have another problem. Okay, uh, you also want to know their medical history. So if they have any medical conditions that could affect what kind of drugs you're going to give and what medications they're currently taking. So an example, the, of that type of an issue would be like a drug interaction. So if you wanted to give nitro, but they're taking a medication like Viagra, um, those are like two vasodilators, which means that putting them together could cause a very dangerous drop in blood pressure. So you wouldn't be able to give that unless, I think it's like 72 hours in between. But again, that's go by your state protocols. You're gonna be hearing that a lot, go by your state protocols since it's different state by state. Okay, uh, right to education. So your patient has the right to know what they're taking and why they're taking it. And with that comes the right to refuse because they have the right, as long as they're not altered, to 
meaning altered mental status. We could go over that in another video. But, um, so they have the right to refuse any type like parts of the treatment but with that comes the right education because you want to make sure that you fully understand why they want to refuse it maybe they don't know exactly what the medication is going to do and again you can get back up on that you can call medical control or you can get other EMTs on your crew to help you and brush up on your convincing skills if you believe that this could be beneficial to them and then the right response you want to make sure that the patient reacts to the medication the way you're hoping for them to. So um, if, let's say that they're having difficulty breathing and you give them um, nebulized albuterol and then they, so, um, they don't have as difficult breathing as they did before taking it, then that's a good response to the medication. But if it gets worse or they have other symptoms coming, then that wouldn't be the response that you're looking for. Okay, so the next topic that we are going to go over is the medication routes. So the routes on this list are oral, inhaled, sublingual, intranasal, intramuscular, subcutaneous, rectal, and transdermal. But the top of the list, oral, inhaled, sublingual, and intranasal, are what you're probably going to be mostly using as an EMT. Things are always changing, so they might be adding more medications in your state of what you can give. But for the most part, those are the four routes. Oral is um, the most common route, what you're going to see most. That's just taking anything by mouth. So if you were to take a chewable tablet or swallow a pill or have some sort of liquid medication, those are all oral medications. Then inhaled medication, that is going to be anything that you breathe in. So if you think of an inhaler, that's inhaled medication. Uh, and nebulizers, inhaled medication, oxygen of the inhaled medication. So sublingual, sub means below and lingual means tongue. You can think language, lingual, you talk with your tongue. So that would be anything given under the tongue. So nitroglycerin is a common sublingual medication that goes under the tongue. Then intranasal, if you're state allows you to give Narcan, That's, that could be given by an ALS provider um, IV, but for our purposes, we give it intranasally. You might have gone to a Narcan training class and they might have given you a little kit to go on in someone's nose, so that means through the nose. And other than Narcan, you might have taken the little spray to help with congestion that goes up your nose, so that would also be intranasal. And then the other routes would you probably wouldn't be doing as an ENT, but just so you know, I am is intramuscular. So if you were to get a vaccine, that's intramuscular that goes through your muscle. Subcutaneous means like through the fat. So that would be if someone got um, insulin, that's usually, that would be given subcutaneously. Rectal would be like through the butt. So um, that could be like, if you ever heard of a suppository, that's something that they use to help with constipation sometimes. And then transdermal, the, there's some transdermal patches, like a patch, of, they might have a nitro patch that they put um, on their skin to give like nitroglycerin, or there's some that are used for ADHD. There's a medication that comes transdermally. And I think also you could have like people to stop smoking they come in patches but all of that um i i mean unless if there's a state that does it i don't think so you wouldn't be giving transdermally so the main ones that you'll see are oral inhaled sublingual and intranasal so i hope that this video was helpful i'm going to be making another one on the common drugs that emts could give so you can look out for that soon have a great day bye